When this baby hits 88 miles per hour, you're gonna see some serious shit. This is Dr. Bones live for New Music Saturday with the co-host Nolan and Catherine Anderson from the Mad Andersons and our very special, lovely, talented singer-songwriter, Julie Gibb. Welcome, Julie. Thank you so much. Well, it's great to have you on the show. Nolan and Catherine, can say hello again. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, everybody. Hello, all. So, okay. first off, Julie, um, on your bio, uh, it says uh, you pretty much between Nashville and Toronto. Now, is it just, just record different recording studios, or is it because of the, the certain music you play? Like, how does how does that work for two places? Well, well, initially it was for recording. When I was really, really young, like preteen, I had a record deal, and most of the work that I did was in Nashville. And then later on, I really focused more on the songwriting. And when I had a staff writing deal there, I had to be back and forth all the time just for co-writes. And with my sister living there, and she now has a really tiny baby that I want to see all the time, I go back and forth just for fun, but also for the for the music, of course. Nice. Well, that's that's a, that's a good way to do it. And then such a, how how young were you when you got your first recording deal? Uh, I was twelve when I signed the first deal. Oh wow! <laughs> so. Yeah, it was it was pretty crazy because I started playing bars when I was nine, and uh, and it was just. One of those crazy weird things that worked out, and I thought, "Oh, this is so easy. Why is everybody complaining? It's so easy." <laughs> yeah, not so. Much. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's it's nice to have a homegrown uh, uh, Canadian and uh, pretty much representing us in a good way. So, um, the music style in general. I mean, obviously, you said you just said you started at a young age. Now, how has your writing style changed uh, over the years, like progressively? Well, it's interesting because initially for the first several years, I always wrote alone and it wasn't until I started working as a staff writer that I kind of opened up to all the different kinds of styles. Like I think when you write alone, you tend to write things that whatever you're feeling, if you're in a bad mood, you're going to write something intense. But when you're co-writing, you have to sort of adapt to the style of your co-writer a little bit. And uh, so it's been a great growth experience just on that front, so now I'm pretty comfortable writing in almost any, any genre, I think. Oh. Okay, we lost you there for a second, Julie. You still there? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so, well, 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 I was gasping, you 
Uh, genre, <laughs> music genre is where I left off. I think that, that was the end of my sentence, okay. so you didn't really miss anything but me sighing and looking at the computer curiously. <laughs> <laughs> right on. Now, did you, besides when you first started co-writing, did you do any music workshops at all, or was it just kind of straight, uh, let's get writing, let's get going? No, I went straight to it. It was, um, I always played a lot of shows, and in Nashville, I don't know if you spent much time there, but every night of the week, there is a writer's round everywhere. And so I really embraced that. And as a result of that, that's how I picked up my deal and my most of my co-writes, which is people that I, you know, that saw what I was doing and said, hey, you know, we should really try something. And I loved it. It was just so scary and so exciting and ultimately a great experience all around. Okay. Well, I honestly have not spent much time in Nashville. I spent about three hours in Memphis on a layover, <laughs> but but, but that, that's about it. And unfortunately, it wasn't that exciting because at the time it was with uh, my dad, so he was checking out uh, a factory that was related to his company. So yeah, it was wasn't it wasn't exactly super exciting. <laughs> oh man! But, you didn't even venture for a Graceland for it. I, I would like to at some point. I mean, uh, but uh, the past little bit hasn't. I really haven't had the time to. But it's it's on the bucket list, so to speak. <laughs> you gotta do it, and then phone somebody you know from Elvis's house just because it's cool to say that. Well, and not 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 only that, you know that that Jack White's there too right now, so it's kind of makes it a little bit more interesting to go visit. Yeah. So, Noah and Catherine, any questions before we get to our first song here? No, I think we should just get into the first song. <laughs> All I'm right. excited to hear him. All right, then. Well, I wasn't expecting that, but okay. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it's right. a surprise. <laughs> You're doing such a good job with the interview, so. <laughs> well, all right, then. So let's lead off with your song on this compilation called Smoking Gun. Julie, this is Julie Gibbs' song. Well, I do. Dig this. Up 
Okay. All right. Uh, and we're back. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You got another song on, on a mess here. So, so that was Julie Gibb. Will I do off the Smoking Gun compilation, courtesy of NYC Fast Factory Records. Now, Julie, I really, really like the song. I haven't had a uh, soul artist on the show in a while, like in general, regardless of song or interview. And it's so nice to hear because you have such a great voice and it's such an easy kind of smooth flowing tune and just like really, really enjoyed it. Oh, thank you so much. It was one that I, I normally, when I finish songs previously, I, I once they're done, they're done, this was when I went back and I rewrote because I really wanted it to be right because I was writing it for a friend as kind of a, a gift, like a gesture to will because he was going through such a crappy period. And so this was one that was really, you know, a big thing in my heart. So it means a lot and people like it. <laughs> Nice. Now, uh, Catherine, uh, before we got on air, we were saying that <laughs> you wanted to ask Julia a few things, so the floor is yours. Thank you. Um, yeah, actually, Julia, uh, I listened to this song, and I went to your website and listened <clears throat> to several of your songs, both Nolan and I did, and really impressed with just the level of finesse and polish that you have. And so you said that you got into music quite young. Did you have formal training, or how did you happen to get into music? Well, I, my mom had four babies in four years. She find ways of supplies. So, and so it's well, since they have, and so I got kind of ourselves on instruments. And then when I was about eight or nine, I said, you know, I really, really think I could do this. And uh, there was a, I was a little hosted by a radio station. And she was like, okay, do one. Do one contest. Let's see how it goes. And it went really well, and it ended in a couple of years of And um, when I was in the management company, they said, oh, I was get some training that connect with a wonderful, wonderful vocal coach who had a strict rule about not dealing with children. And he said, okay, you can come down and audition, but I'm just doing this as a favor. And we ended up working together for nine years. And he was brilliant. He toured with Billie Holiday back today. And... Outstanding, and then I spent guitar privately with Red Shea, who's a Canadian legend, who's um, Gordon Lightfoot guitar player for many years. And was on TV for the longest time and was just a genius. But that's the extent of my my training. It was all private, and I taught for ten years, which in itself kind of forces you to stay on your toes mm -hmm. and learn as much as you can. Oh, absolutely! I think teaching is the best way to learn. Oh, oh. yeah. Well, on uh, some big names are Gordon Lightfoot and uh, Billy Holiday. I haven't heard anybody mention her in a long, long time. Like old, old uh, blues recording artist, but she had a great voice, and it's, it's good to hear that uh, people still uh, remember uh, what we we'll call the good old days for uh, jazz and blues. For sure, and I mean, granted, I mean, when we were going through his, you know, his CV, and it was like, okay, this is going to be really good. But down and watch the movie Lady Sing the Blues just to give you an idea of what we're dealing with here. And <laughs> it, it was really eye-opening. And I mean, I hope she is one of those, you know, really supreme of the two generations in the future will look at and go, okay, this is somebody worth knowing. Oh, you know, there's... Go ahead. Oh, sorry. It's uh, Yeah, I just think that there are certain singers who were, need to be known forever if, if that's possible no no it's it's true it is possible because as we know uh everything kind of goes in cycles and circles so it all comes back around at some point and it's just a matter of uh people keeping on top of this stuff and keep on mentioning this stuff as like far as influences go and just or just in general just musical artists saying, you know what you really got to check this stuff it's old but it's it's cool because a lot of that stuff a lot of that time period was really cool i mean growing up uh my dad was was a beatles guy and uh, kind of blues and jazz as well as my mother. My mother's more of a classical person, but either way, with blues and jazz <clears throat> growing up, I grew up with uh, <clears throat> Buddy Guy, Billie Holiday, you know, Miles Davis, like 